So it's um, we we might honestly let's let's start <laughs> this. You know, if we're talking about shaking ass, we might. You never know where the night goes. You right. know, um, it's the honestly we we have the right to. I will do the intro today. <laughs> By all means, okay. Community Coalition Show. I got David Two K. How y'all doing? Kenneth Wilson. Right. Mindy. Bestsellers over there. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. Oh, you heard. <laughs> I wasn't going to bring it up, but you Gotta know. bring it up. Gotta bring it up. Yes. I mean, we did talk about it last week. We talked about the book coming out last week. So, right. um, and, and all the work and effort. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, our book, Black Men Love, is actually a number one bestseller in 13 different categories. Yes. So, so gotta say that about. too. You know, I gotta, talk, I gotta talk this one. So yeah, yeah, and you know, you know what? I'm already, I've already, I've already felt validated with this one, especially because one of our mutual friends texted me and she said, "I get like, pretty much what she said to me was, I get it, and that's all I want from, that's all I wanted from this, for one person to just be like, I, I understand what you're saying, I understand where you're at." Yeah, so I that's a dope. You. That's a dopamine hit. I started reading it, and right now I just finished Adrian's chapter. Okay, yeah, third one. Yes, Shall so say far, Adrian. I really like it. Mm-hmm. Everybody has their own story, and I love it. Adrian's chapter really took me on a, a wild ride. It's truly a ride or die situation. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I definitely dig it so far. David, I read yours, of course, because it's first, and I thought, right. you know what? This is dope. I really enjoy it. Yeah, we started it off I, with David. I yeah. appreciate that so much. But wait till I do my review. I'm telling my review. <laughs> yeah, that is right. Please. I, hey, know, please. I know please. Edibles is wearing off. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> Talk wait about it. My review, I'm like, niggas, oh, shit. This book is great. Y'all should read it. <laughs> hey, he's going to start off. <laughs> I'm telling you, I come in hot to pull them in, and then they're gonna right. leave me. I'm telling you, you're absolutely right. I'm, so we gotta... I'm not even saying that because I know y'all. Because if, <laughs> if it was if it was trash, I'd be like, slam. I don't know if this is it. No, it's really good. I definitely enjoy it. No, everyone who I appreciate has, it so much. Everyone who's come across it so far um, has been able to pull something from it, or really says, you know, it is. It's collection. It really yeah. is a collection of 14 different men. Mm-hmm. And our stories and our perspectives, our viewpoints, mm-hmm. where we're coming from, where we are in our lives, you know. So, like, I do believe there is something for everybody in this book. I don't think it's just for men. I really think it's for everyone, men, women, right. young, old. There's something there, you know, and it is right. authentic. And that's one thing I can say. Every every man came with their heart. They came with them and they shared that. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't censored and things like that, you know. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. That's- that's, that's really important relatable like if you even if you like i said you said it's for men and women it's true it's it's definitely relatable like you'll be reading it like damn yep yep for real yep damn <laughs> that makes me feel good though but i, I mean you, adrian's chapter yes. though it was like i'm telling you it was like a wild ride there <laughs> oh, so there we go shout out to adrian taylor shout, shout out to, to adrian. my guy it's like one of them tiktok stories stay tuned for part three <laughs> yo <laughs> Hey, volume two, y'all. That's all I'm going to say. Volume two is going That's to be all I'm going insane. To say. My phone has not stopped ringing literally since Saturday. Like, Love to hear it. Love to every, hear it. You know, and one thing I'm enjoying is, too, is that it's, it's energized people. It's charged people, too. So even outside of this, to do other things. Now, I'm, you know, brothers hit me. I'm thinking about this. We should do this. What about this? Like, mm-hmm. so that was one thing too. Like, this has been a community project. Right. And I wanted it to be that. I don't want to just do things by myself at this point. Like, I've done right. that. That's really no fun. Like, but also, who are you helping? You know, right. like I told you guys, told all four, 13 of y'all, mm-hmm. I did this for y'all. You right. know, I did this for my bros. Cause one, black, black men ain't sharing about love. Right. You really express them. But also two, it's hard to get them to talk about a book. No one talks about writing books, you know? Right. So, you know, 13 men have the accolade of saying they're a best-selling author. Yep. Mm-hmm. And now I am proud of that, you know? I, same so, here. 
So like I texted you earlier, David, David, you are a best-selling author. Ah, uh, man, that's that's so crazy yeah. to me because I never thought that this could happen. And I've said I I feel like I've said that like a hundred times since the books come out. And I I'm still like I know it's gonna hit me again once we go on tour. Yeah, because that's now to add that to your resume so ladies david yes, is single, and now he is a best-selling author so like so i'll um you got to walk around 2002 wait what year is this 2022 yep wow <laughs> david go walk around with a book in his hand ready to go like i might this me right here y'all this me this me right. i'm in this i'm in this right and they'll start at the beginning so it's all good yep. we started off with david yep yeah Oh, with, right, you know, you... that's... oh, sorry, go ahead, David. No, nah, go ahead. No, I was going to say, like, you know, that, that had to be big. Like, was that planned? Because it's like, David sets the tone, like, should I continue reading or should I stop? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So obviously, it was good enough or we continued to read. Then I'm going to tell you, I leaned to the pros on that. So that was the publishing company. Really? Yeah, that wasn't me. I really didn't. For me, the order didn't matter. Like when I went through it, it wasn't something that I was like, this has to go first. I let the pros on that one. And Man. so, you know, to, to, so, so to know David that professional editors, people who put this together, they really chose the order. They put that in there. So, you know, for you to be the lead off. Man. Yeah. That came from the pros. Dang. That's so, uh, man. that's another notch on his butt. He about to cry. I'm trying to make him cry, uh, y'all. You really are. <laughs> <laughs> but this was this was such a humbling experience, and honestly, like I can't wait to. I've already started writing for the next one. See, now I, I don't even know what the theme is yet. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna figure it out. And then you know, I'm getting a lot of interest from the black women. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm gonna be on that. I'm gonna start writing mine now, See? right? You ain't even right. Gonna ask me, but if you say his hey, slim, I'm gonna be like, oh, guess what? I'm done already. Boom! I already told my mind what my chapter was gonna be called. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, black woman love coming soon. Coming soon. It's it's happening. It's happening. So I'm gonna be bold about it and mm-hmm. gonna speak these things. So and right. again, it, it clearly is helping people. It's doing something for people already. Right. You know, like I said, it's crazy. You know, I I share this, but. The book really was a bestseller before we had our launch. And that was, that was for me, that was eye opening to say that we didn't have to start advertising yet, but right. people were already searching for something. I'm not saying they're searching for this book, mm-hmm. but that means they were already like on Amazon. They were already looking for something. Right. Came across this and said, mm, this seems interesting. Interesting enough to read and buy it. Mm-hmm. So for me, that just lets me know, like I said, it's this confirmation that. Yeah. I think we I think we we did something to help, you know. Right. So congrats also, to yeah. Also, like I think, like you said, people are searching for this. Like this is like people are looking for a guy. Yeah. And it's it's the fact that like people are searching for something like that to for them to find this book. It says that, hey, here's an here's an here's may, maybe not a guide, but here's something that can maybe help you like navigate in your mind how you think about it yeah so it's nice to see everybody's different take on relationships and love i mean it's just it's it's not leaving like a what's that book that steve harvey did oh think like a man man. yeah it's not like that it's just it's truly stories of black men being vulnerable which Mm -hmm. is cool and I'm glad you said that too, because I don't want to get, I didn't want to get lumped. I didn't want to do stuff like that. I didn't want to do like a men tell the secrets, men spill the tea kind of book. Like, no, right. I wanted this to be really, even if you read the title, it's a tribute to love, mm-hmm. you know, and everybody brought something different. So, and it really came from really good men too. That's the one thing, like to pull this from men who are really trying to help other people, men who are really trying to be good dudes and fathers and husbands and mm-hmm. boyfriends and you know like just significant others in general yeah ain't no trash on this one y'all ain't no ain't no ain't no trash ain't no suckers you know these are real men of integrity yeah. so yeah so i won't spend too much time because we got roll but congrats but they need to read it anyway so they do and okay. I, I thank you for saying that yindi 
Um, Very much cause appreciated. Because you, you know how it is. We as men, we can say that it's our stuff. We can push it, but right. um, I think it needs to be so heard from a black woman too. Mm-hmm. You know, so so I'm telling you, these chapters are relatable. Like off that, when I first started reading Adrian's chapter in the beginning, I definitely really I was like, yeah, that was me in high school. <laughs> see, see, oh, you was that. You was that. <laughs> I ain't gonna say what it was, but you was that. You gotta read the book to figure out what that was. So, yeah. So, congrats to everyone um, who made this possible. Bob and publishing. Really, if y'all looking to do That's something, nice. highlight them. They're really yep. amazing at what they do. I'm definitely mm-hmm. proud of y'all. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Also, if you want to cop the book, hit my hit the link in my bio. Go to the bio. Don't go to Amazon. Go to the bio. Yeah. Cause, Definitely. cause, and we'll, I'll say why Amazon, they charge at least thirty percent mm-hmm. off rip. So that's thirty percent taken away from the authors. The royalties take forever to get there, and you know you're really not supporting the authors. So one of the reasons why we chose this model is that the authors sell them directly. They get the money directly. Mm-hmm. You know, so if David's here. Holla at David. Get it directly from David. That money actually goes right to him. You are directly mm-hmm. supporting him. You're right. directly supporting the other authors. You're not giving thirty percent to Amazon, like you, you know, like right. pay them for what they did. That was why I wanted to do this. Yeah, you know. Also, it's think about it this way: you wouldn't, you wouldn't want a label getting thirty percent of something you did one hundred percent of. Yeah, yeah. So think about it. Think about that. So support, y'all. We'll link that too. So mm-hmm. all right, get out of the way. We we move in time. So it's frustrating. Because we got to go through something so we just talked about something so positive. Mm-hmm. Now we're gonna have to talk about something extremely negative, negative and frustrating. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, I don't even want like I know we have to have the difficult conversations, even though yeah. I don't want to. And this one's frustrating because I feel like we've had it before. We have. But, um, I mean, we we can't talk about positive black people, positive culture without talking about some of the hardships, you know. Mm-hmm that we as a people have to go through. And last week, we all know what happened last week was another mass shooting. Like, right. I don't even want, like, I don't even want to go into all that. Like, I can't, I can't. Wasn't it right. two of them? How many? Yeah. Two. Yes, it I was. thought yes. there were two. There, there Buffalo, were two. Buffalo and Texas. I so. Right. No, I mean, I thought there was two in Texas. At least that's what I heard. Oh, it's not. Honestly, I don't even know. I don't know if, if but that's what I heard. I thought there was two, but, but it, it, it's, there might have been because also there was a there was a shooting up here. But that's what I'm saying. It's so yeah. many. It's so many yeah. now. Oh, in Baltimore. I don't know if it was Baltimore or PG County. I can't keep up. I can't keep up. Honestly, and I don't even want right. to do that right now. I hate to say that, but like, pray for the victims, please. Yes. But I can't keep up. Right. Like, it's too much. It's too many. Mm. It's a bunch of cowardly ass motherfuckers out here. It's crazy. Right. Like, because you would think, remember when you growing up, they tell you, I was like, be careful in the hood. You know, you could get shot in the hood. Now you get shot anywhere. It's safe in the hood. You literally can get <laughs> shot anywhere. You can't go to church. You can't go to the grocery store. You can't, you can't even be in elementary school. Right. I'm talking about, I'm talking about like, so, like, there is no. There's no safe space. I didn't even say space, but like this evil is running rampant. Absolutely. Like, I don't even know how else to say it. This is evil. So with this topic though, well, not the topic. I guess we're not talking about the reason behind it. We more so talking about the whole issue. But to I hate to not to bring go too much detail but the one thing that frustrates me about the thing with texas is they said that that person had no history of mental health but then the governor of texas said that it could have been mental health but they just said he had no history of mental health issues so i don't understand let's let's start it yeah i was gonna say that basically just goes into basically the whole reason why we're having this conversation is gun control so right Okay, only you shouldn't pause too long on a podcast, but mm. the leadership in this country does not care about human life, right? No, let's just call it what it is, right? And when they do, or when they say they do, 
it's literally for their own gain yes like um right now the republicans care because there's an election coming up right so they have to pretend like they care they They they, act they're acting like they care because they they're they're puppets Mm -hmm. literally their puppet master is the nra yep i wish i you know what i saw that number what not too long ago um how many politicians the nra actually funds Mm -hmm. um Oh, like, especially the Cheeto. Uh, yeah, but I mean, they they um they fund everyone. They fund all of them. Right. Like it's not even like a game. And like I can pull it up right here. I'm not even going to hold you, Rihanna. I, I know we talked about this before. She don't want to raise her kid here. She's going to Barbados. Now her reason for raising her kid in Barbados is different than mine. But I'm telling you, I don't want to raise a child here. Because I, it's just too easy to get a gun. I don't want to have to like. Did you see that? Um, it was a commercial from. Damn, what the heck is the name? Oh, of that? is it the is it the is it the one of the school shooting and the Fanny kids Hook. are the yeah. kids are like in the the actively... last scene in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah, the back to school one, the bathroom scene when she was texting her mom. I love. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't want to be that parent to get right. that call because I promise you I'm going to jail. Right. I'm going to jail and I'm like don't kill the person who's shooting. He better not cuz I will resurrect that ass. Right. And haunt his family with his body. <laughs> right. Oh, and that that was my mentality. Like that was something that I thought about too. Like Kenny, I really don't know how you do it. Right. Because I want to have kids. I want to I want to raise kids I want to raise my kids to be to the here. best that they can be but I don't want to have to worry about if someone pulls up to the school and wants to harm them. Bro, we have to worry about everything. I have to worry about my kids. I have to worry about my, my wife. I have to worry about myself. I have to worry about my family. Like no one is safe at this point. Right. Remember Columbine? Like I just yeah. remember that after Columbine, we our school was having like this whole big thing about shining a light on the shadow of hate or whatever they called it. I just remember this kid called in and was like, I promise you, I'm going to pull the fire alarm and I'm shooting everybody. You know how mad people stay home? Hattie made me go to school that day, but <laughs> mad people stayed home because they were terrified. And I'm just like thinking back to that. I don't want to raise a child here. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm out. Right. I am leaving. Like Y'all I get it. My say, listen, she a traitor to her country. I don't want to be here anymore. What? I want to leave. <laughs> I am out. Right. Same here. I do not want to raise my child here. It's just racism is not getting better. It's just still we are still stuck where we are. The whole thing with gun control is just shitty. Like mm-hmm. I just I can't do it. Right. And another part of that, like I would homeschool my kids like right. i'm at that point i'm at that i've i've right. been at that point for a while but, but also like, this is just another reason but it's not even just being in school it's also being at the mall because i've been there too right. when we had a shooting well it wasn't a mass shooter but the guy was shooting at the mall like i've been in that situation it's like it doesn't matter where you go anymore right. and that's my thing so like i can give you a dad perspective <laughs> We live in this country right now, right? Mm-hmm. We're here. You know, it's still one of the best places, best opportunities, right? So, yeah, we have kids here, right? Ultimately, I have faith. I lean on my faith. I don't That's trust it. anyone else but the faith, you know? So, I know, of course, I think in maybe perfect conditions, Maybe we could just bounce somewhere. But we say that, but we still here. You know what I'm saying? If we really felt that deep, we would still bounce. I stack my bread up, Slim. But that's what I'm saying. But I'm like, if you here right now, you have enough faith to live here right now, which means you'll have your kids here. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know? Right. Um, So I think that's one thing. Two, homeschooling is easier said than done. Oh, absolutely. You know, to to be homeschooled, it means you have to be there with them. Mm-hmm. To me, you still have to follow the curriculum and everything. It's not like you can just sit here and chill and just watch it. It's that's right. not for everybody. 
If you, you know? do that, um, the online school, I mean, you still got to be there, but they'll have a curriculum and everything. Yeah, yeah but, and then you but, lose other things too. Yeah. If y'all I, met, want my, I want I don't my wanna, kids to like, I don't be mean. on certain things. I don't want to be mean, and I'm not trying to be mean. But have y'all met homeschool kids? I have. Yeah, I got one in my troop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, there's they're, a there's a lot they're pretty of, cool, honestly. They're pretty cool, but, but there's a lot you miss out on too. Mm-hmm. It's not for everybody, and it's not for every family in every situation, honestly. Right. You know, so let's go back to the reality of us being here right now in this country. We live here right now, you know, mm-hmm. which means we have to operate here, which means we're still under the confines of everything that happens here. Right. So it you know, unfortunately. As black people, <laughs> head on swivel. We're faced with everything, and honestly, mm-hmm. other places we go to, there's other countries that we okay. It might not be guns, but there's other right. issues we have to fight too. Mm-hmm. Going to the Caribbean, somehow. you know, that that's probably one of the places. And then you know, like life changes. Mm-hmm. It's hard, you know. You have like, to so, you have to adapt. So not to go too deep, but let's say right now, you can leave right now, right? Right. Why not? So you gotta do a citizenship. Why not leave right now? Six months. Could you leave in six months? Well, me technically, I could. Yeah. But would you? I would. I have a place to go. It's not like I would be stuck out there. Like I got family I could live with. Yeah, it's I like do I too. I want to leave my mom. I'm trying to convince her to go with me. Leave this place. Or I go to Canada. <laughs> I got fam in Canada, but also like there's there's so many factors that I have to factor that I have to just think about with Come that. Come See, on. Me, like, I'm different because I don't have kids here. So I don't I could just dip off and go anywhere. But I'm bringing this up not to be an asshole, but I'm bringing this up for us. Think about the average black person. Mm-hmm. The average black person don't have nowhere else to go. That's true. They may not know family, have someone else to go, you know, mm-hmm. like I think both of you all are blessed to have family in other countries that, that you could push come to shove. You really probably could bounce. Right. I don't I have no family outside of this country. Uh, I mean, y'all got family in Trinidad. <laughs> I mean, other than that, right? But like, let's say if it was just me. I mean, technically, I could go set up shop somewhere else. Right. But it's not realistic. Um, I lose most of my source of income. Mm-hmm. Most places I go, like my professions don't even exist. Um, I, You know, now, now change. Now we talk about change, which is probably the biggest hesitation for most people. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, it has to be. It has to be. But... So the, so the question comes, is the fear that we currently face right now in this country enough to make someone change and uproot their whole life to go somewhere else? So to me, I just, it's it's not really about fear. I'm just frustrated. Now, but, I don't want to go into it because it, it'll be a whole podcast on my reasons for leaving. And I'm sure people will disagree with me. And that's fine. Yeah. I just personally feel like at this point, and my mom said that she was the same way, that she felt the same way. She didn't Mm -hmm. even want to have kids to bring into this world. And that was in the 80s. And so she understands where I'm coming from when I say, I like, I'm just at a point where I'm done here. And I did consider moving to another country. I mean, my mom wants to move to Canada. I thought about it. And I understand that things will not be perfect someplace else because, you know, racism is everywhere but there are right. some countries where there are things that are a little better than here which is why i consider it leaving yeah mm-hmm. yeah i think so, it goes back to i think it goes back to the conversation we had about like what if black people all black people just got up and left and they're right they're coming right behind us i say that all the time right. they are they really are yeah not like, like they not just they you know no, they 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 gonna find a way to integrate back to us. And but right. it's just like I was talking about with my grooming client. We need to consider. I think I, I think we do need to consider everything. I think we do. Like I just think at this point, 
we as a people just need to come together and be on the same page with how right. we as a people and as a culture and everything is moving forward. Mm-hmm. That's the first thing we need to do. You know, um, even though this issue, gun control, and these crazy, it, now we see it, it goes beyond racial barrier. These people, it, this is just evil at this point. Oh, definitely. Absolutely. You just want to, you just want to kids at this point. Like, this is just crazy. Right. But, but, but um, I know you're saying that it's evil, but it meant, again, I'm going back to mental health. Does anybody, now I'm not even talking about the people who just walk into random places and shoot, but the ones in the school, and I'm not trying to say that what the people do in the school shootings is right, because it's definitely not, but like high school kids mm-hmm. who decide, you know what, I'm going to kill everybody who's messing with me. Why is it that nobody is taking the time to listen to these children? Like if they're going home to their parents every day and saying, look, I'm being bullied, I'm tired, I hate these kids, you know, like nobody just seems to pay attention to that. The the signs are there, and it just seems to be like people are ignoring the signs. Mm -hmm. I think that brings, yeah. Honestly, I can... I can kind of navigate this because I was definitely bullied in in school, but there really wasn't anything that I could do about it except just keep my head down or just laugh along with it because like, and I hate, I hate this because schools always say bullying won't be tolerated. And it's the it biggest lies. piece of bullshit that, mm-hmm. in, that's ever been said in schools. So I think here we go. So we're coming back to the systems. And I think that's a big part of it. I don't think anyone truly gives a damn about anyone else's mental health right? or health in general. Mm-hmm. Our leadership definitely doesn't, you know, Absolutely it, not. because it would take and I think here's the issue. It would take a real fundamental shift. Mm-hmm. And how we operate and how we treat each other, you right. know, like you can't, in my opinion, you, it's hard to account for mental health and resources for that when you're also putting in way more resources into NRA spending and, and right. lobbying and mm-hmm. guns and stuff like that in, in capitalism. Like, mm-hmm. the capitalism really, mental health really don't go hand in hand. They really don't. If you care about the money, it's hard to care about the person. Right. You know, um, and so and in this con- ooh, another conversation that was being had was or someone or maybe I just thought about it, uh, maybe taking money out of us, uh, taking money out of the defense fund and putting it into the schools so that they can actually pay for counsel for more than like three counselors so that they can pay for maybe mental health uh oh, classes bro we both if, know we've yeah i'm i think we've had a conversation about how schools don't and that goes back to my original plan. point they don't care about human life right because let me tell you right now the systems that are in place right now even this even the educational system does not account for human life Absolutely. because because uh, yeah. to educate someone first means you have to care about their well-being. Mm-hmm. And that means we have to go back and care about the kids' well-being. Right. And oh, these teachers don't give a fuck. It's not even it's the teachers. It's the <laughs> system. Yeah, right. No, the <laughs> system. Think about the system itself. Like, mm-hmm. counseling, mental health are afterthoughts in the educational system. We, we've all, we've right. all been to school. Mm-hmm. One counselor every 250 kids. Yeah. Case loads. Like, it's all about the curriculum, curriculum, testing, testing, testing. But no one is really accounting for the mental health aspect of it. No one's really picking up on those things. Think about if a kid is feeling stressed, they're feeling scared, they're feeling bullied. Mm-hmm. That is an afterthought. We know that. Even though I don't care what they say, we know the processes that are in place. Right. If you went and told someone right now, do you think they would stop everything? Like, if you were in school, they would stop everything and to deal with that? No. no. But also, it's at home, too. The parents are also at fault. That's what I'm saying. Home. Because yeah. cause no one at this point is really accounting for human life. Right. No one is accounting for people's mental. Everyone talks about it, mm-hmm. but no one has put anything in place. No one's really, really, really doing anything about it. Right. And the pandemic showed us that these parents, our parents, or I shouldn't say our parents, but 
parents really don't fuck with their kids because they like we saw that how many problems that were ha- they were having when the kids were home and the the parents couldn't didn't understand how to like it's it's hard to account for someone else's mental health even your kids mental health when yours is not being addressed that's true that's true that's what i'm saying across the board Mm -hmm. no one's no one's dealing with this stuff you know what i'm saying so like so that's that's one system Mm -hmm. that's already in play here now you got the leadership who their actions the laws and stuff clearly don't promote any protection here all right you know, I know here where we live in the DMV in Montgomery County, they were trying to get rid of, like, for a couple last couple of years, they were really trying to push out having the, um, what's it called, the, the, um, the CROs or whatever it is, the officers that were in the school. Ooh. And the parents were already, they were fighting for that. They didn't want it to happen. They were trying to get them out of the schools. So they didn't feel like they were necessary. Were right. they the officers? Are they, like, security? No, they were actual cops. Oh, we didn't have that. We have security guards. I mean, we have security yeah, we guards, have, but we have security un- guards too. They're unarmed. Most yeah. of them are. Yeah. I hate. I hate to say. I like a lot of them, but a lot of them are Stupid. older, retirement age. Like, mm-hmm. you know. But they actually had here. They actually had police officers. Oh, they were only in uh, out here. They're only in special schools. And that was only, and I think that was high schools, really. But I'm thinking. Yeah. Think about that. Okay, how much of a budget would it take to put a cop in every school? Like, but if you care, the money's there. Like, the, or a retired cop. That's what I'm saying. The money is there. Let, mm-hmm. Let's be, you know what? You know, I'm going to tell you how the money's here, right? This is in our right. I'm just going to throw some numbers out there. This is where their money goes to each. These are just the senators. Mm-hmm. What they're funding campaigns. One senator is getting 13 mil. Another one's getting six mil. Another one's getting five, four, three, three mil, three mil, two mil, two mil, one mil, 12 mil. That's a couple of them. So that's when I tell you. So when we see stuff like this happen and we expect our leadership to just be like, now we will put things in place. Who do you think they're answering to? Right. They're answering to people who are funding their campaign to keep them in power. Right. Ignorant people will say, it's the president's fault. No, because you can introduce a bill. It still has to be passed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And passed through the Senate. Congress yeah. and well, since I said this, don't this forget house, yeah. those, those all can be vetoed. Yep. So the whole system here is checks and balances. This goes back to the conversation we had how government works. Yep. Right. And, and it's not even just, understand. and it's not even just Republican, y'all. Um, I think some of the Democrats are back too. They get mm-hmm. money too. Right. Oh, definitely. They're getting funded. So so now we got leadership that is not going to change how it's operating right now. Mm-hmm. They're not. Because if you like, why is it that we talked about this? So now we got leadership. Now we got no one really gives a damn about mental health. Mm-hmm. Now we got access to. Right. How is it that a kid can't buy can't buy a drink, right? Or a lottery right. ticket. Or a lottery ticket. But he could buy a gun. He can Several. go to a gun show and purchase a gun. Several. Mm-hmm. Several arsenal. How are kids getting their, their hands on body armor? But not not just not just any type. I'm like, what the hell am I trying to AR, say? AR AR fifteen. Thank you. Um, <laughs> not just like a basic handgun. Right. They're going for an assault rifle. Straight up assault rifles. What do you need an assault rifle for? In no. You know, I met a guy who had three of them, and I asked him, "What do you need this weapon for?" And he's like. Oh, I just have it just to collect. Nah, fam, I'm good. I didn't want to talk to him. I was scared. <laughs> yeah, I'd be scared too. I don't, I don't want to be around you. Right, like you might go the, crazy one day. The second, the second, <laughs> the second something's off, I'm clearing out. And try to speak out against people being able to have access to that weapon because there's a lady I follow on TikTok. She does the news under the desk. Mm-hmm. And people really got mad at her when she was, explaining like how being shot with that rifle shreds your organs yes kids had them kids had no chance and people were like oh you're so ignorant don't spread lies like what lies this is facts that's another thing too. oh dang that goes back to uh dang that goes back to when, when we talked about right and when uh when the recent shooting happened 
a lot of the parents couldn't couldn't identify. Mm-hmm. No, kids. because because you have they have no chance. They had no chance against that. No, nope. right. no That's chance. You have no chance of survival when you get shot with that weapon. And there's only a few doctors who can piece back your organs, but it's like. And think about. I mean, you you really don't have a chance, like. Yeah. Because it was designed for that purpose. Mm-hmm. Like, it wasn't designed for defense. Like, sometimes, you know, like, sometimes they'll say, like, a handgun designed for, like, defense. So, no, that was designed to kill you. Right. It is a military murder weapon. Mm-hmm. Like, Why is it so easy to get? Like, a handgun? Okay, I understand. But why is a weapon like that so easy to get? Oh, let's, let's, especially let's, a kid, and why are the kids? Because some of them, it's their parents who are purchasing these weapons for them. Like, right. are you just sending your kid to do your dirty work? <laughs> no, because these people really believe that guns aren't a problem. Like, they, that's what they believe fundamentally. Like, oh, it's how you use them, and blah blah blah. Like, and we see that all the time. We see that. Like, there's a large part of this country that is like when you talk about gun toting, loving, like. They right. really like guns. We've mm-hmm. built a culture of people who like guns, gun enthusiasts, right. gun collectors, mm-hmm. all types of madness. And they will argue, even till this day, even after what we just saw, they still argue that the gun is okay. Mm-hmm. And then also, too, the money. And then let's go back to $13 million, $6.9 million, $4.5 million. $4.4 million to say shut up and let the guns roll. Right. That's what they're doing. They're getting paid. This is our leadership. <laughs> like, I don't think I understand. People understand how crazy this is. Like, like the buck's supposed to stop with our leadership. Right. Let's go back to our government conversation. It's like you mm-hmm. said, though, with everything, it's a business. Yeah. This is a business. Mm-hmm. And let's not keep it, let's keep it a thousand that our government and our politicians are still controlled by businesses. Mm-hmm. Right. Lobbyists. Lobbyists and private businesses run this country. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like, let's keep it a thousand. So when they say, when they say, nah, we riding with this, what do you think they're doing? They're putting the people in place to agree with them. Mm-hmm. They, I saw so many interviews of, of congressmen this week and they ain't even know what to say. They, they couldn't, like you can see it on their faces. Right. Where it was like they knew they knew shit was wrong. Yeah. But they had been told, you better shut up. Yeah. So Stay they had, in line. Yeah. Best fall in line. Fall in line. Or we will literally bury your career. Mm-hmm. So they were struggling. People asking questions. <laughs> like, bad not say nothing against the machine. Right. Like this is this is insane. And this is what we're dealing with. Like. I think the only person you could trust who does is the person who does not take money from those businesses. And and I'm gonna tell you, I'm sure here. it's hard to find somebody that does that. First mm-hmm. of all, you can't get to this level without it. You mm-hmm. can't fund your campaigns without this kind of big money. And let's say, okay, you don't take money from the NRA, you're probably taking from somebody else. You That's know? just as bad. Yeah, or another type of business. Like like I said, there's a reason why they in pockets. Is there, think about how much money. This is another crazy thing. I need to find out how much money does the NRA bring in every year. I'm sure if you Google it, you can find out. Yeah, because if, if they if they got million, think about they got millions of dollars. Oh, you know they do. Like, is that just from donations? Does the NRA does the NRA take donations? I'm pretty sure they do. I'm pretty sure they do. Is like, it a nonprofit? No, thank you. I, ju- I just like how are they getting this money? Let's find out. Um, charities from the political groups. I'm reading an article right now. Mm. 55 million. Okay. NRA took more than 400 million dollars from his charities from 2005 to 2020. What's the what's the charity for? I don't. I'm not even. I'm reading the article right now. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Tax records show the main NRA lobbying arm in 2020 
the revenue dipped down to about 282 million. Mm -hmm. This was 2020. It dipped down to 282 million. Um, The previous election cycle, they had 367 million. They are getting money. Do you know who um, participate in NRA events? Who I know who was at the live that convention they just had last week. Mm-hmm. Boy Scouts of America. Mm. Mm. Oh, here's a, here's a nice little chart. NRA Civil Rights Defense Fund, NRA Foundation, NRA Political Victory Fund, NRA Special Contribution Fund, NRA Freedom Act- Action Foundation. Like they got arms to get this money. I just right. have a problem with um the whole shooting sport why do you need to enter children into that like this ain't the the 1920s they try right? but they, they trying to keep it that way they trying to they when they talk about like make america great and stuff they want to go back to them times right they want to go it's back to the time when very much all good for them it's very much make america white again like i said they like this stuff because of the pushes their agenda so think about this. They're getting this money from people giving it to them. Which means there's a lot of people with a lot of money out there that agree with this. Mm-hmm. So this this isn't something that's going away anytime soon. Right. And We're talking about it's... hundreds of millions of dollars in this flow. Where do you mm-hmm. think they're getting it from? Right. And it's sad because they're there this is this isn't the first shooting that's happened at a school mm-hmm. so they're they're willing to let kids get murdered to go back to my just, first point right they're willing to let kids get murdered just so that they can stay in power they can get their money and they can keep pushing their bullshit agenda that's all it is sick they don't care i told you they don't care they don't care they about don't. life and apparently we don't either. So there's a lot of people out there that don't either. Until it affects them. Until one of their family members and one of their loved ones get shot and killed. Right. That's what it that's what it ends up taking. Like it's so much money involved. This is this is big, big, big business. This is big business. Like, so that's why when we're asking these questions, y'all, if y'all listening, watching, you know, we're trying to have these conversations. We really need to open our eyes to how deep the rabbit hole goes. Right. This is not a surface level, oh, this is going to go away. This is deeply rooted in American culture. Well, the NRA will never go away because even they put that on their website. They are heavily involved in all political affairs. All. Yeah. All. Yep. All. And that's that, for this reason. Like, I'm going to be real. Um, this is what you do to, to keep yourself in power. Right. I do it. I do this. Right. I got friends in high places for a reason. Because I need access mm-hmm. to certain things. And I'm trying to do it at a community level. You know, like, I learned that model from other people in business. Right. And I'm not even talking about white people, black people. Hey, I'm gonna fund your com- your I'm gonna fund your campaign. Mm-hmm. So when you get elected, you're gonna give me some kickback. Right. I'm gonna get something from you in return. Right. That's an investment, y'all. Not only is it investment, it's protection. Yes. It's yeah. all that. It's all that. It's it's the hookup, it's the plug, it's protection, right. it's all that. It's literally the flip game. Yes. So that goes back to my leaving thing because people want things to change. It's not going to change. This here is what we have. This is our world that we're living in. Mm Because I'm saying like, maybe it's time to go. Why are we holding on to this country? Like, why? It's a good question. And that's why, yeah. And that's why for the average Black person, especially in this country, like, but those are the conversations we need to have. And that's why I was asking you earlier, like, mm-hmm. because we need to think about this stuff. But I mean, right. 
I see I see Spanish people can come here or even anywhere and they look out for each other. That's how that's how it should be. We should be able to pack up and go. And somebody say, You come in here, I got you. I'll put you on. What you need? Right. You need resources? I'll help you out. Like mm-hmm. I'm just trying to figure out everybody screaming like this country needs to change, it needs to be better. And I hate to say it, no matter how hard you fight. It's not going to change. Right. And it's not going to get better. Way that it is. Y'all not going to put the right people in office. Half of the time, people don't even want to vote because they think, well, politics are not for us. The government doesn't care about us, but y'all not even doing anything to change. So why are y'all fighting for this country? People is like, oh, but America is free. But are we free? Are we free? Because black no. people are always talking about how we the most hated race here. So why are we still here? Right. That's, That's the thing. I don't think I don't think the majority of black people are fighting for this country. I think the majority of black people don't don't want to do anything. And I know that's going to hard. People going to disagree with me. No, no, no. But you're right. Out of sight, yeah. out of mind. They don't you're think about it at right. this level. They don't want to push for anything. They're mm-hmm. comfortable. Right. Ignorance is bliss. And comfortable where you are. I got friends with like who they've think they're doing okay in life and they just trying to stay in their little pocket and they comfortable they don't want to they they might vote they don't want to do anything they don't want to help anybody else out they just want to stay right where they are and they got their little piece right here and it's mm-hmm. not until the world affects them somehow that gets them out of that comfort zone right but that's not enough it's not enough because then i hear them complain too mm-hmm. even on a small scale don't complain if your taxes are high. Don't complain if your gas prices are high. Don't complain if you can't get this and you can't get that and all the first world problems that we really have and we're spoiled about this shit. Don't complain because right. you sit in your little bubble. You good. You think you got a couple of dollars and you think everything is sweet. It's like, and then something happens to you, then you get mad. No, that's why I go back to what we have to do. Number one is we have to start coming together. Mm-hmm. Nothing is going to change. We do have power. If, if all the black people came together and said, hey, this is what we're going to do. If we're going to push the needle this way. It's going to move. Right. We do hold that weight. But as one person here, one person there, one person there. No, we don't. Hmm. We don't. And we've seen this time and time again. If a couple of us get together, it ain't, it ain't enough. It ain't going to work. Right. But like black spending power is huge. Mm-hmm. I promise you, if we put all our money together, we could probably stop out the NRA. Think about all the, all the black money that's running around here. Really, like really. If black people, if black people move, we saw that. We saw that with the 08 election. We saw that with Obama when he decided to move. Mm-hmm. No problem. Get everybody else up out of here. And then we took that, and there was no momentum. And then we just went back home. Well, they know that. They, they know, know that. Which they is know why that. they. Um, you know, they're moving the, the voting zones. They're creating fake it, zones on the ballots now. Right. <laughs> they're doing everything they can to keep us out of that. Mm-hmm. And no one, no one on our side is talking about that. Right. And that's why I say, like, when you see when you see when their power moves and you see how they move certain things, and then you look at over at black, be like, hey, do you see what's going over there? And we don't care. We don't care about the real issue. We don't care about the real move, the real chess moves that are being made. Mm-hmm. We don't care about that. Black people mad because your gas prices is high. I'm mad at everything right now. I know, but your gas yeah. price is really okay, cool. But like, do you understand they about to legislate you out to be able to make any type of decision in this country? That's why really important to vote. Yeah, but they about to they about to move it so that you can't do that, and no right. one's mad. Like it, it always brings me back to the Fred Hampton movie about how he was. He was literally bringing people together, and they didn't like it. So what they do? They they get with a plan, get them up out of there. Black leadership. That's what they do. They that's what they've done. Our black leaders. Mm-hmm. Anybody they see because they see black leaders as a threat because they know what's about to happen. Right. You will get them. Nah, nah, nah. We're gonna get them up out of it. You got the FBI studying people. Oh, people do anything you can to undermine them because they know. They really, really know. They know way more than we do. Right. Oh, with the power that with the power we have, they know right. about that we we can't even understand that. We don't even have to talk about it on a big scale. They they censor us on social media. 
Like Maya. we can't. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. My bad. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I apologize. Uh, like they they censor us anytime we use the hashtag black. Mm-hmm. They gonna censor this part. They just might. <laughs> I was gonna say, um, my one of my grooming clients, he told us the other day, he's like, the when Martin Luther King said he had a dream, the dream died when him and Malcolm were killed. Yes. That's true. Because there was no one else to take up the mantle and keep it going. Right. Yeah. Like sad. And now everybody's scared. Yeah. Also, I'm saying, like, I know you said they'll follow us, but I'm telling you, what if we did all say, let's leave? Like, seriously. I mean, let's go. I think about it all the time. I think of Wakanda, like, what if it was a real place? Yo, I, we gotta, uh, build. Be, we gotta build. Not to be ignorant, but what if it was a real place? No, what if we, what if we all picked a spot and set up shop? You know, mm-hmm. one, I, I truly believe it will cripple this country. Mm-hmm. It, would it, would. Cripple, it would cripple this country one bye right. we all took all of our resources all of our people all of all of the power and everything our talents our skills everything set, we've done and we set up over here mm-hmm. first of all like i said <laughs> all aspects of this country would crumble right. and we need to censor certain people from seeing what we're doing right but that's what i'm saying like mm-hmm. like i said it would be wakanda with the shield up like right mm-hmm. Because, also, all skin folk and kid folk. But I, 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 mm-hmm. I think it would. I think it would. Oh my goodness! Like we could do a whole other show on that. Yeah. Because I do think about that, and I think there'd be so many layers to it. Mm-hmm. Where I think the ultimate goal is, I honestly, honestly, I think the ultimate. It they would try to kill us. Oh, absolutely. I really believe, like they would not like just let us leave. Like look, look, they're trying to do it now. Like my they, mom used to tell us this when we were younger. But they're trying to build a ship. They're trying to build to get life onto, uh, I forgot what planet. Mars. And I'm, when, it, when the time comes for this world to end, and I know people are going to say I'm crazy, but it's going to happen. There's going to be a comet that's going to hit. We ain't going to be able to get on that ship. This is, the price is going to be too high for us to afford the tickets. My mom used to tell us this all the time when we were young, and I used to think she was crazy. But now that as an adult and I see it, she's mm-hmm. absolutely right. Because we don't feel like we need to push our kids to do things. We don't we don't really have anything. What's it called? Uh, any Drive. resources or um, inheritance for our children. Right. You know what I'm saying? My and mind then, is trying to think before I speak. So I'm struggling with my words right now. <laughs> no, go ahead. No, but because that's what you're supposed to do. Like 20 steps ahead while I'm trying to say what I'm trying to say. But... You know, it's like we're not gonna be able to get on that comment. I mean, oh my god. On the ship. I got you. I got you. No, but I think I Go think on vacation mode, my bad. And this was all done by design too. Right. Like in this country, we were designed to be kept at a certain level. Right. Like we were not designed to be equal. We're not designed to be on the same status. Like we were designed to be here. Mm-hmm. Now it used to be a slave. Right. Three fifths okay. of a person. They had to come up out of that a little bit. They eased it up a little bit. Now you're designed to be a consumer. Mm-hmm. You're designed to be a worker. You know, right. you're supposed to be here. We're they're here. We're supposed to be here. Right. You know, the worker thing really fucks me up. But that's yeah. But I mean, like yeah. I mean, shouldn't surprise anyone at this point. It's all the shouldn't. all the systems are in place to keep us down. We're not supposed to buy houses. We're not right. supposed to advance in our careers. We're not supposed to make the same amount of money. Right. We're not supposed to have equal rights to say so in leadership and things like that. We're not supposed to be able to vote. We're right. not supposed to. Um, we're not supposed to be CEOs. We're not supposed to be like. We're not supposed to be like community well, the same leaders. ownerships not, and stuff like that. No, no, right. no. We can get to certain benchmarks, but we can't. That's why if you, I was just talking about this the other day, like there's certain levels and certain statuses that we're not going to touch. Like, for example, and I hate to bring sports into it, but there's a reason why there are no black NFL owners. Because mm. you can't get to that boys club. I don't care how much money you got. Even the richest of us are not going to get to that boys club. Right. Diddy was trying to buy the Panthers. And they're not going to let him. He got the money. They're not going to let him. Why? Because now you get a certain level of access to right. what's happening now. Mm-hmm. That So, like, you can you can get to one point, but they still want to close the door over here. Nah. Right. They got to so move you, the goalposts. You got a bill. You got two bills. Okay, you got money, but nah, you can't get over here still. Mm-hmm. 
and it's by design. Been, yep. It's always going to be certain levels of access that we're not going to be privy to. Mm-hmm. And not only that, they're going to dangle it in our face so that we will want it. But that's the thing. Yeah, you can want it all you want, but you ain't getting this. So I was the blacks in Johannesburg thriving and surviving. Mm-hmm. They got that's money. What- money. That's how we need to be. But that's the thing. So it's like until we start creating our own systems. That's what I'm saying. Here's probably not gonna happen because they they got they pay they hold all the cards here. Right. Mm-hmm. See, that's what I'm saying. We need to leave. Yeah, right. Why are we still here? Because right. now you have to convince all the black people to leave. Yeah. That's the problem. And I guarantee you 99% of them probably won't want to like leave. Right. And you know where I think it could start? And this will go back to a real early pod. We we start with the Black currency. And from there, we start to build it up. Only us know about it. Only us can use it. But they're not going to let that happen here. Right. It's Look at crypto. Yeah. Government was like, wait, y'all doing what over there? We can't control that? Nah, nothing is going to happen here because again, we don't hold all the cards. Even if we did something on the low, low, as soon as they sniff it out, they shut it down. Right. right. As soon as it doesn't benefit them, they can't get no gain off of it somehow, some way. Right. Nah, we, they, they're trying to do that with crypto. Yeah. Like trying to put regulations and stuff on it. You can't use it for this. You can't use it for that. Mm-hmm. You know, because that means now, now they, they, putting their control on it now it's i'm nice telling thing. you if i hit the lottery i'm buying an island yeah i probably school people I school. are welcome to come mm. and i will start a whole new world on this island Starts- i'm telling you we need to leave I'm- I know I people are like i'm quitting i'm giving up i'm not even trying to fight but honestly <laughs> here it is we are still fighting the same fight that our people have, our parents have fought. And we're still fighting it. It may be a little different than what their fight was, but we yeah. are still fighting the same fight. Yeah. It's not getting better. People will say, oh, well, we've come so far, but we are still too far behind. Right. And guess what? There's no reason why we still have to talk to our children about watching out for the police. Oh, we got to mm-hmm. teach our kids that people are not going to like us because of the color of our skin. Why? Here we are in 2022, and we still have to have those very same conversations. And people are like, oh, but this new generation, but still, the old generation are still bringing up racist people. And I just think it's time for us to go. Right. Well, we, we, yeah. saw, we saw the fruits in that. I mean, so, well, I was, yeah, I, was hoping for, I was hoping for a hot second. Like, maybe if we get the old guard out of there. Nah, then we saw Buffalo. Yeah. Exactly. Y'all saw that kid and that, that was, pulled up to the... He, you think that Cheeto is the one who started this because right. he woke up those who were sleeping. He mm-hmm. woke them up. He gave them a voice. And now here they are. And what are we going to do as a race? And see, I wasn't even here when y'all had that conversation because <laughs> damn it, I wanted to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. But we're, like, what are we going to do? What right. are we going to do? I say we leave. Right. I People say I like, sh- it's better, easier said than done. Mm-hmm. But there are a lot of people who have the money. Like right. come on now. Yeah. Oh. Y'all remember y'all remember that kid that uh pulled up the house to someone's house with the whip? Yeah, my mom was telling me about that. Right. That's wild. See, that's what I'm saying. We are still here in these times. Right. The same shit that we had to be taught when we were young. Mm-hmm. We still have to teach our kids about it. We are still fighting the same stupid fight. And yeah. it's because they hate us, but they want to be us so bad. Because I right. just saw a white chick with dreads and she pissed me off. Because <laughs> yeah. it's like, why are you even wearing those? She made right. me so mad. But I'm just saying, like, here we are still fighting this fight. Right. And, just, and we don't have any leaders. Right. And we're not getting any. I feel like I, I hate to say it, but I feel like we're not getting anywhere. And guess what? I'm tired. Right. And I just feel if I, I just said this today, I don't know. I think I would feel bad to bring a child into this situation. Like, right. I, I don't want 
want to have this conversation with my child. I really don't. I know I'm going to have to, but I, I don't right. really have to do with it. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be, I know for me, it's going to be extremely hard because I'm going to tell my child, you shouldn't have to go through this. Like, oh, th- this shouldn't you, be happening to you, but this is the way it is. Yeah, you shouldn't. But you're going to have to have difficult conversations with them. I will. You know, um, you just don't shy away from it. Right. Got to be mean, honest. Got to be honest. The thing is gun violence right now, because I promise you, and I know you say you have faith, but I, I'm going to go to jail. I'm telling you. Oh, I'm, well, I don't have, I mean, I don't have faith in this country. I know, but you're saying like, you, you know, you have faith, but I'm going to jail because I'm going to choose violence. Yeah. When it comes to my kid, yeah, I'm choosing. I mean, you are, but. Uh, What are them families? What are them families in Texas choosing violence at right now? Who are they choosing violence to right now? Let's no, be he, honest. He's dead, but I don't want them to kill him because I want to uh, Okay, he gets locked up. What are they going to do? They can't choose violence. I know. But I, I would choose violence because that's the ignorant side of me. Yeah. That right. would come out and choose violence. But that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, who are you choosing violence on at this point? That's and then saying. on top of that, if I choose violence, I get taken away or I die. I told what, you. What am, I, what, am I, what, am I, what am I kids going to do? Oh, well, at this point, like if your kid was shot and killed, what would you do? I gotta choose violence. Does that on happen? on who? Well, I mean, in this situation, that person was killed, but it could be a Kyle Rittenhouse. He ain't dead, so I could choose violence if it was that type of situation. I mean, I know what you're saying. Yeah, but, that's but what I'm sorry. my emotions just can't help but be ignorant in this situation. Right. I know, yeah. but I feel like it's a cop out to the victims' families. You it know, is. and it that's is. why, and that's why I say like we're at the and mercy. I apologize we're at the mercy because, at this point. No, yeah. but I mean, like the reality is, those people are still at the, we we all mm-hmm. are still at the mercy of, of all of this. Right. You know, I sympathize for that because yes, I would want to choose violence too. I would, but. They can't even direct it at nobody right now. That's what I'm saying. And if it's and if that right. and if the fucker ain't dead, they locked him up and protected him. What you know? Why? They you know how they shot him, but they ain't shoot the buffalo dude. And and let's talk about all the reports. And that dude was Spanish. That yeah. That's what I think that's why they mm. shot him. Because the buffalo dude was white, and they ain't shoot can, his ass. Can we talk right. about how they were scared to go in there at first? Yes, yeah, and that's what I was reading. That's Can we talk about how they was they didn't want to? Isn't your whole job to run where run towards the chaos? We need to talk Isn't about your whole fucking job. Saying, to, they kept saying about that plan and protocol, but that's a whole nother podcast. From what I understood, it took it took they defied orders to the ones who eventually went in to defy the orders. I think it was like forty five minutes, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. The man was in that joint. He killed everybody in there hiding at this point. Was he in one classroom? That's yeah. what I, I think, yeah. But I yeah. think he had moved around a little bit to get to that classroom, though. Yeah. So my thing is, like, I just I want to know why. Like, you didn't even go to school there. You was in high school. Like, you didn't even direct your anger towards high school. You went to elementary school. Because you went to the most. Not only that, world. you're an older per. He's a coward. Like, suck it ass coward. He's a coward. Fucking 18 year old. Those what do these kids have to dirty. do with anything that you're going through in high school? It's the same thing with the Sandy Hook dude. All of them. Like, why? All right. of them. None of these, none of them, they they not they're not going after people that like can defend themselves. You went after some right. kids, bro. You're going after the vulnerable. Yeah. This is cowardly. Like all of these it was all like these, mad senior citizens that these, these, so. That's why I say, like, <laughs> I hate to say this, but I'm gonna say it like. I want to. I want to even the odds a little bit, right? I'm a, I want to carry the strap. At least I can bust back and give a fighting chance. Yeah, that's that's the only thing I could think to equalize it at this point. All right, well, Buffalo, you and had a chance because apparently the security guard did bust back, and that's what I'm saying because he had heavily military. armored. So, so you gotta like I say, the only way to, the only way to combat that is you can't you gotta have you can't have access to that stuff, right? 
the cops and, were out. The cops were outgunned. Right. How was the how was the criminals have better stuff than the cops? Right. And it totally dispels the whole good guy with a gun. No, like the only thing, and that's what I'm saying. So, like, then then there's issues with that. Let's say you start arming everybody else. Right. Now you got way more crazy people walking around with guns now. Right. And guess what? No one man should have all that power. No, but then you have like minor disputes. We see it. We see it now with road rage. Mm -hmm. God cut him off. He come busting back. Like people are so unstable. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Like. It's it's a it's a never ending cycle. There's no one answer. We 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 asked out. That's what I'm saying. Like it goes and, back and to my whole thing. I know because right. other countries don't have this issue. I know they have their own issues, but right. they don't have, don't have problems with guns. They don't have, have a, gun. a lot of they citizens gun. are not even mm-hmm. allowed to have guns. Right. They don't have this issue. And if they did, you they eliminated all these weapons, and you really see the numbers drop. They don't have these issues no mm-hmm. more. Right. Like, no, we can't do that here. Ban assault what? rifles. Ban assault rifles. That's the start. They would never ban they would assault never. rifles. Guns don't kill people. People kill people. And unstable, and there's way too many unstable out here, people who have. So, yeah. and so that argument is made at this point. It, it really is easy to get a gun. There is no mental health check. Like, you don't go through a background check. And I know because. You don't have to have a gun license to buy a gun. No. At least not in Pennsylvania. You could just go in anywhere and purchase a gun. I a mean, you have shoot. to be... Go to the right. gun shows and stuff. We're talking about the right. gun shows. I believe that... If, well, if you have to be 18 to purchase a gun at a gun store, but I'm not sure about a, a gun show because in the video, that kid was young and he was able to buy a gun from someone at the gun show. Because you think them dudes at the gun shows are asking a lot of questions? They try yeah. to get that bread. And if you got a couple hundred bucks, it's like most things in this country. If you got the money, yeah. we'll sell it to you. Right. And you got to have hush, a hush about license it. to have a car, but you don't have to have a license to own a gun. You do have to have something to carry the gun if you want to go in the store. But to have it in your house, you ain't got to have nothing. Yeah. All right. So I'm saying like all this, this is, it's crazy, y'all. And I know we can I know we can go all night and this is one of those topics. Yeah. I just wanted to have the conversation at least, you know. Because mm-hmm. like I, I see there's a lot of people pain, there's a lot of people hurt, there's a lot of people scared right now. It's sad. Right. It does. Especially if it's your baby. Yeah. Like I can't you know, like seriously, the even it's it's like it's the little babies. Like why the babies? I can't imagine. And I don't know. I mean, like, why anybody, but Especially the babies, like what right. did they do? They existed. Uh, only thing I can think of is evil. Like that's the only thing I can't think of anything else. Like, right. but as a parent, though, I know you say you have your faith, but you don't feel a little fear, like when you send your daughters out all the time. I'm paranoid, safety dad as it is. <laughs> I, I'm scared of everything out here. Mm-hmm. I don't let my kids walk if too far in front of me. Like, so stuff like this is 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 bonkers. It's 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 I can't it's it's like it's so crazy. My brain has a hard time computing and processing it. Mm-hmm. Like that's how unimaginable it is at this point. But if if this but let's say if this happened somewhere. I hope it never does. But let's say it did. And you let's say if you were those parents and that person didn't die, you don't think that you would feel some type of rage where you will like, you killed my kid, I'll fucking kill you. Of like, course you do. Oh, I'm pulling up. Do. That's what I'm saying. Like, I just cannot see myself not being violent to that person. Like, you just killed my child. Right. But the thing is, they protect, like, even in jail, he's he, like, He's not just walking up down the street anymore. I'm right. calling. I'm calling in a favor. Well, that's what you'd have to do <laughs> yeah. if you know people who can do it. But mm-hmm. that's what I'm saying. But I'm, I mean, like, of course you do. Of course, it's it's unimaginable. Like, it's unimaginable until now, it happens. How crazy. Do you and, have and, to have the when this stuff happens? Do you have the conversation with your daughters? Like, yes. with this situation here, did you yes. talk to them? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's heartbreaking. To even it is. It. My daughters watch the news with me. 
They get up when I get up in the morning. They they sitting there watch like what's going on. And 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 we have to have those conversations to be aware of your surrounding, to be aware of certain things. You have to know what's going on in the world. They may not understand everything, like the complexities and the government and all that stuff. But like mm-hmm. they they understand bad things are happening. Does right. it make them scared? Like, are they scared to go to school? Nah, I don't think they're scared to go to school. Um, I, I, like I said, I think. The sad thing is, I think as a people, we're almost becoming a little numb to it. All of us, right? You know, I think like it's it's it like with other things, we get upset, we get upset. As time goes on, it starts to fade, and then we go back to life as normal. Mm-hmm. Pandemic showed us that too. Absolutely. Everybody was scared for about two weeks. The first two weeks we was real scared, right? And then we was in the house too long. For most people, they got mad because they were in a house too long and mm-hmm. their lives got interrupted. So what happened? They tried to go back outside. Well, not me. I was like locked down. Locked yeah, down. but I mean, but I think, yeah. look, look at look how most people were acting though. Yeah. And look at how many people are acting out now. We, we saw protests. We were people was mad. We were mad. We were protesting. We were protesting. Everybody was angry. And after about two weeks, it started to fade. Mm. And everybody went back home and stopped protesting. And we went back on to life and business as usual. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's this cycle. And unfortunately, the more these things happen, the more and more numb people get. And so we don't get as upset. We don't get riled up and get as angry as we, we did because we're getting so used to seeing it. That to me is the problem, you know? And so as a human too, like, unless you direct that somewhere, that energy, that anger, and that frustration somewhere, it either consumes you or you just, it goes away after a while. Right. We live in a world with so many distractions. So and we don't even know that a lot of them are distractions. Yeah. Yeah. So I choose to put my efforts in a lot of preventive measures. How can I empower at least myself and the people around it? Maybe small stuff compared to this, this, large issue but like i try to pour out to people as much as i can what do we do you know how can we prevent these things from happening how can i teach people how to you know move around a little bit more think about things a little bit more clear a little bit more focused on some of this stuff we educate the goal of this podcast is to educate a lot of these things mm-hmm. so and it's I'm like ignorant like me <laughs> <laughs> but i mean we have or to me. But I mean, trying to trying to direct some of this stuff in ways of thinking, right. bringing people together. Like I said, some of the issues we talk about, like how do we bring people together? Like, and so it's the efforts we're trying at some point, you know, right. I just feel like for me in my life, I have to do something. And this is my something. So it's madness. It's crazy. If I hit the lottery, I'm going to do something. I'm going to buy an island my people you are more than welcome to join me on said island yeah i think i think i'm coming with you but it's funny how like when you i watch especially black people who the black people i really respect and i've seen them like they they don't live in this country anymore yeah they don't they live in other parts of the world you know, yeah, we, I have friends that just moved to uh, North Korea, not North Korea, Lord, they moved to South Korea. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people like, or if they didn't like permanently live, they tried it, you know. Um, but I, I see a lot of that too. Like, people who once they start seeing too much around here, they start knowing a little bit too much, and they have the means to, yeah. Or they spend a lot of time away from this country, even if they don't, like they got like dual citizenship or something like that. So they can go get up out of here for a little bit. But a lot of times they have to come back because they do business here or something like that. Right. But you'd be surprised. A lot of people, y'all, y'all don't know them rich people, a lot of rich people and stuff like that. Like they might be here for a little bit, they might keep residence here, but they move. They be moving. Uh-huh. Home girls. Um her you know her parents moved here from africa and then uh when she got older because you know she she was like all for the american dream 
But when she got older, she was like, I'm out. And she went yeah. back. I don't know what part of Africa she went to, but she did. I used to work with people like that. Where yeah. they, their whole I'm not mad at that. Here make the bread. They came here and made the bread, but the money goes longer back home. It does. I had a lot it of really friends. Does. Like, I had a lot of guys. He, like, he, he was working here, but he was getting the house built back in Ghana. Right. And he's showing me pictures of the house. It's almost done. Look at it. Like, damn, that joint is sweet. Yeah. But the houses look great. So when when he looks like he's living in poverty here, he's living like a prince over there now. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. So I get it. But he used the systems to his favor. It worked out, you know. Right. Or a lot of families they'll send one person to this country, set up shop, right, and they start sending it back. And by mm-hmm. the time they're ready to go back, everybody good. That's what right. my family did. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sure my. Mm. They got they sent some people here, but they got a nice little spot back home. So and I'm sure my parents are planning the same thing. Yeah. So all right. I know we said we wasn't gonna go too late tonight, but I just wanted yeah. to have this conversation. Um we can skip the Bob's and Karen's because we got the ultimate yeah. motherfucker on, on last week. We saw right. what happened. Um so let's just let's just wrap this up. Y'all, y'all know we bought mm. you by the Black Squirrel Media Network. Yep. Um, and not only that, we are sponsored by uh, our new book, Black Men Love. Yeah. So, so, um, in the bio? Yeah, we'll put it oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You didn't know how to find us by this point. Yeah. If you're listening, yeah. you know, you probably know who we are by now. Yeah. But, but I don't even. The ladies out there, David is single. He's a best own officer. Oh, oh my God, what is <laughs> no more? And uh he's a producer. So there you go. I plug you. Whoa! Mm. Look at that. If you get married, appreciate you. I want oh, you're you're invited. The, you're invited. I want to hold up. If you get married mm-hmm. because of my little promo, mm-hmm. I want to be the best man, but I'm a woman, but you get what I'm saying. Oh, you got it. Okay. I'll rock a tux. That was the agreement. Okay. That's only. All day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't have, I don't have no jokes. I don't have nothing with you tonight. Like, Look, Father's yeah. Day is coming up though. Plug it. Yeah, yeah, it is. Like, uh, I guess dad. get some for get some for your dad at menestatue mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, do that and be safe out there, y'all. Like, yeah, please. That's all I got. Like, really, I think if nothing else, like head on a swivel at all times. Yeah, and get home. Get home. Right. Like, and, and on that, we'll be back next week. May bring some more better energy. Yep. But we out. The energy. Yep. I know. Peace. Yeah. Peace.